When we were children, we, are, we have been interested in our own origin, right? And have been asking our parents about it. Most probably we could, could get an answer that Stork brought you. And this is just one of the examples that shows how popular the Storks are among people. There are lots of legends, poetry, songs, jokes about storks. And uh, because the storks, white storks, are so important culturally, it was possible to use them as a model for conservation education. What does it mean? It is easy to explain to the people that wetlands, which are habitats for the storks, have to be protected when we use this culturally important bird. And then we assist in protection of habitat, and together with storks, we protect thousands of other plant and animal species which are not that prominent as the storks are. And um, uh, this helps us to build a huge uh, conservation network in Armenia. Because the storks, why they are so popular? Just imagine, it is a huge bird that breeds next to, to the human. And people in villages, they love the storks, they care about their storks. So this allows us to build a large conservation network in Armenia. Over 1,000 families in Armenia are conducting monitoring of the storks and their reproductive success. Every year we receive from 60 to 100 phone calls from, uh, from these people uh, with different uh, level of emergency. In some cases they, they are funny, like our storks are fighting with each other, what can we do? And yeah, we have to respond, okay, this is nature, um, they are, those are males which are fighting for the nest. You don't have to interfere. Um, so, the winner would become your stork. In other cases, uh, other cases could be more crucial, like stork collided to the wire, they fell down, they broke their leg, wing, um, and then we have to go, we have to uh, take the stork to the vet, uh, then to conduct a process of its rehabilitation and release back to the nature. Why we do this? Because this way we raise the responsibility of, of, of the people. When they feel that they protect the storks uh, on their breeding place, they also feel responsibility for uh, protecting the foraging, feeding place, the wetland habitats. One can say, okay, this project is successful enough. And it is, because in 2007, the project won Whitley Conservation uh, Award, the British Top Conservation Award. Why do you need to conduct uh, monitoring if uh, it is so successful? I teach environmental science. Basically, you know, for students who don't have environmental background. And when I come to the point of um, monitoring, when I have to explain the, the monitoring, I usually use the same trick. Now I have um, my students here, so I would probably uh, wait for the next generation to use the trick again. But anyway, so I use the same trick. I ask, like, how, money, how much money do you have? Well, I mean, do you know how much money do you have in your bank account? And usual answer is yes, because even the laziest student knows how much money they have, because they have to know how to plan their expenses. The same thing is applied for natural resources. We have to check them regularly in order to understand the tendency and in order to be able to plan their use. When we are talking about single species, this is fairly straightforward. For example, crayfish. We consume crayfishes which come from the wild catch. And therefore there is a need of consistent 
uh, monitoring of the population in order to understand the trend, in order to be able to plan the catch for next year, for next five years, for next 10 years. Because we had, have bad examples. Uh, Sevan trout, Ishan, was overfished. The whitefish, Sikh, was overfished. So we have bad examples. And we assume that we don't want to repeat our mistakes. So, but when we go to the level of ecosystem, this is something different. Because in ecosystem, there are lots of plants, animals, fungi, microorganisms, which are interrelated to each other and also are related to temperature, humidity, precipitation, seasonality, or whatever. And implementation of monitoring of entire ecosystem would be fairly expensive. For that reason, we select indicators, species or groups of species, uh, which are sensitive to changes. When their number decrease or increase, it means that there are some changes. And then we can start deep study of those changes and develop uh, mitigation measures or restoration measures or whatever. Storks have been, pardon me, storks have been good example of that. Using storks, we have been able to identify lands polluted with DDT, uh, DLDRIN, and other persistent organic uh, pollutants, which are responsible for cancer, asthma, and other nice diseases. Now let's compare. Storks live in Ararat plain of Armenia. Um, if we go for chemical monitoring of the, of the plane, we have to take, like, let's say, one sample for each square kilometer. Then we have 3,000 samples, and then we have to spend $200,000 per year. Using storks as indicators, we uh, spend um, something like $15,000 per year. The same logic is applied for other indicators. Using raptors, we have been able to identify how changes in land use influence prey species availability and then influence abundance of raptors. Using forest birds, we have been able to identify how industrial tree cutting influences forest ecosystem and how we can improve those practices. Using grassland bird community, we have been able to identify how overgrazing influences um, community of step birds and how to improve uh, grassland, practice, uh, grassland management practices, making them more sustainable. Um, okay, when we select an indicator, we have to uh, take into account two things. One, it should be sensitive to changes, otherwise it is not indicator. Second, it should be easy to identify and count. Why? Because we need extensive data. Because using that extensive data, we are making conclusion that we trust. Because then, based on that conclusion, we have to spend money on adopting new technology, on restoration of habitat, on developing mitigation measures. We cannot spend money for the conclusion that we don't trust. From another side, number of specialists is, is low. So there is a need of help that can come from, from public. Of course, we are not Great Britain, where we have, uh, which has um, one million of bird watchers and 10,000 of them are regularly participating in bird monitoring. We are not Germany, where in each 10 by 10 kilometers there is at least one uh, bird counter. But there is potential among us as well. Because we love the nature. At least we love to have picnics 
at nature sites. We love to drink for, for the nature, for our water, for our land. Now let's imagine a family group that goes for a picnic, and before they start picnic, they spend 30 to 40 minutes for bird observations. Then they submit their observation through electronic device. Anyway, we are attached to uh, tablets, smartphones, or whatever. And after that, start the preparation of barbecue. Is it too unrealistic? I think no. Because interest in nature, interest in environment, it is an instinct. It is instinct that helped cavemen to survive. It's an instinct in broader context, like uh, interest to business environment, cultural environment, so social environment, that helps us to be, uh, you know, productive and successful. Why not to, to give a chance to this instinct to become realized? This is minor contribution. But this minor contribution helps to come to good conclusion, um, early warning on misbalance, early development of mitigation measures, and therefore it helps to, self, to save uh, funds. Funds that can be used in other fields then, other than um, re rehabilitation from disaster that we created just because we didn't pay enough attention on time. Thank you.